So here we are. This is uh, the last video in this little section about variables in P5.js. And before I go, because I'm not going anywhere because all I do is stay in this room and make videos, um, before, before I go on to the next topic, which is conditional logic, which will really unlock a lot of creative possibilities for you, I want to give you one last tool uh, that will hopefully make things a little bit more exciting in your life. Um, uh, and that is the random function. So the random function. So we, we, you and me, together, have been doing a lot of stuff like this. Var x equals 50. This is well and good, and because x is a variable and 50 is a perfectly fine number, and I'm happy with my rectangle at pixel 50, but there might be a time where you want, yeah, the whole point of doing this programming thing is to have systems of logic, rules to generate behaviors and graphics and designs. It's not really about like, let me pick my five favorite numbers and set those variables to those numbers. So there's a lot more to it, but a first step in that direction is we could at least say, here's the rule. Whenever my program runs, the circle will appear at a random x location. So instead of saying var x equals 50, I could say something like var x equals random. And random is a function just like any other function line, ellipse, fill, stroke, it requires some arguments to uh, define how that function will behave. And random, if you watch the previous video, is just like the map function. And if you recall, or if you didn't watch it, the difference is when you say line, a line is drawn on the screen. If, uh, the line function performs a task. When you say random, a task is performed picking a random number, but that function resolves to, it evaluates to that number, and you can take that number, what it resolves to, and assign it back to something, a variable value in this case. So if I say 0, comma 50, I'm kind of at the edge, there's a semicolon there, the parameters, the arguments that random takes are a minimum and a maximum. And random will give you a number in between 0 and 50. One thing that's important here to realize, which is a small little distinction, is that here are some numbers you might get. 2, 21, 70, well, you won't get 73. That's above 50. 42. But I will mention you probably won't ever get these. I mean, you could get these numbers. You're more likely going to get numbers like this. Right? It's giving you actually a what is sometimes referred to as floating point numbers or decimal numbers. So in this case, it doesn't really matter. P5 can handle that. If you get the number 50.34567, it knows to just draw something at pixel 50. Um, but there's other cases where we might need to do a little something more with that. I probably shouldn't have even mentioned this because it's like a little unnecessary point of confusion, but I've already started restarted this video like five times, so I'm going for it. Okay, so let's actually start uh, messing around with this and see what happens. Okay, so I have a sketch here. Uh, actually, I'm going to start a new one. Uh, uh, no, no, no. I'm going to say File, New Project, and I'm going to call this uh, Dots. And what I would like to do is have some variables. And I'm, you know what? I'm going to use objects since we learned about this. I covered those in a previous video. So I have a point, and I'm also going to have a color. Let's see how I'm doing here with my having just learned JavaScript syntax. <laughs> so you can see I'm setting up a couple variables. Uh, I want to have a point that has an x and a, ooh, I, I, my finger disappeared. The point that has an x and a y, I want to have a color with an r, a g, and a b because my plan for all this is first in setup, obviously, to create a canvas. Uh, let's make it a nice small size. And then, in, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going I'm to set a background. I'm going to set it in setup because I'm going to just, so this background is just going to happen once. And then an ellipse, I'm going to draw the ellipse at point x, comma point y. Uh, it's going to be a small ellipse. And I'm going to fill it at color.r, color.g, color.b. So I can zoom back out here and we can see we should be able to run this sketch now. Hit run. Ooh, okay, problem with scope. What happened? Look at this, interesting. Ellipse is receiving an empty variable in spot number one, two. This is not intentional. Color.r, 
color dot b um uh, I could put some semicolons here. What did I miss? <laughs> uh, R G B. <laughs> Help! Help! <laughs> Look at this. Uh, what am I doing here? Oh, ellipse. No, it's ellipse that's got. Oh, look, some crazy stuff has happened here. Some horrible stuff. This video is a disaster. I'm going to fix it. Uh, I might cut this out if I remember to. Uh, point comma. Point x, 100, y is 50. Point x, point y, ellipse. All right, let's, let's do some things. First, when we have these kind of problems, this is a useful <laughs> point. Let's just comment out the offending lines of code. Hit save and hit run. OK, no errors anymore. Let's. Let's comment back in fill. We can figure out what's going on. Still no errors. Let's draw an ellipse the old-fashioned way. And let's see if this works. OK, that seems good. Now, what's wrong with my point x and point y? Let's try this, just point comma x. Let's run it again. Ah, empty variable in spot 1. You know, I wonder if point. Uh, Let's call it spot. I wonder if there's something wrong with using point. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> that was interesting. I'm going to have to look into that. <laughs> um, so I don't know if point must be some key word that's doing, oh, oh, I've done something horrible. Boy, wow, this is great. This is great. OK, I know what's happened. I know what's happened. This is great. OK, so, um, <laughs> so here's the thing. Um, let's, what, what did I just do? Let's think of some functions in P5. I know I'm on, off on like this horrible tangent now for another five minutes, but some functions in P5 are like line, uh, rectangle for drawing a rectangle, ellipse for drawing an ellipse. What if you want to draw a point on the screen, huh? Well, what's the name of that function again? Point. So point is like a kind of an important thing in P5 that's meant for something highly specific drawing a point. So if I try to make up a variable called point, I've completely overridden the existing point function. And you know what? I didn't actually override it because P5 then overrode my variable because things are happening in weird orders and strange ways. So that didn't work. It was trying to like use the point function as the place to draw the point and everything exploded and I got a weird error message. So that might be something that P5 could handle with a friendly error message. And maybe after this video is over, someone will file a GitHub issue. Maybe that person will be me. But let's go back. And we solved it. But hopefully you saw this, the, the steps of debugging, of like everything was like exploding and going wrong. And just if you can't take a deep breath, calm down, comment some stuff out, start putting it back in slowly, see where things go wrong. We've gotten a bit further. But now we're back. I'm back. This video is still only at eight minutes, which is totally reasonable. And we're going to, I'm going to go back and change this to spot. And I'm going to say spot x, spot comma y. And I'm going to run it. And we can see, there we go. I have the circle, and I'm going to move this over here. Being drawn, excuse me, I'm, I'm like, I want this to give me a little more space. I have the circle being drawn at 100 comma 50 where the spot is with this particular color. So what happens if we start to add some randomness here? So one thing I could do first, remember, draw looping over and over and over again. So what if I just say spot x equals random between 0 and 600? This is another thing that's worth mentioning. I want to have a random spot anywhere between 0 and the width of that canvas. The width of that canvas is 600, so I could write the number 600 there. There does happen to be a built-in variable in P5 that knows just dynamically what, what the width of the window is. And this is useful to use because if I use that variable width here, instead of typing 600, if I later change the size and create canvas, I don't have to change it elsewhere in my code. So I'm going to do that. And I'm also going to say spot.y is random 0 to height. So now let's run this program. And look, I just get spots all over the place, spots, 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 all with a nice red color. But perhaps what I want is to say uh, color 
dot r equals random between like, I'm gonna 100 and 255. Color dot g is always zero. Color dot b is random between, you know, 100 and uh, 190. I'm just picking like random arbitrary ranges here. And now we might see, look, I've got a nice variation of random purplish pinkish dots. And I could even say add a little bit of alpha here and run this again. And you can see I have a, a nice little like pointillist. And you can, actually one thing you're noticing here, if you look really close, is there's little black outlines because I didn't turn off the stroke. So what I'm going to do now is say no stroke and stop and start. And there they just look at this beautiful, all these nice little dots, layering, this nice little pointillist thing. So you could take this much farther. You could make random sizes. You could map the random ranges based on like where, like if the dots appear on the left, they're more greenish. If they're on the right, they're more bluish. So there's so much you could do. Try to see, maybe try to create a random uh, painting here. You could use other shapes besides just circles. Um, that sort of thing, that sort of says an exercise you could try. I also might return to this particular program. If you remember this, we worked on just a little bit of a painting program where you move the mouse around and as you move the mouse around, uh, you paint something. And so what if you could, every time you, right now, every time you click the mouse, it erases the background. What if you could, every time you click the mouse, you get a random background color, or as you move the mouse, the color changes randomly. Um, so there's lots of think, interesting possibilities there. You can make this painting program a bit more sophisticated. Okay, so that is the end of this video. And I think this wraps up my section of videos on variables. And I'm gonna keep that weird little thing that, that happened that I think was a good, good moment for today. Okay, uh, see you later.